you can do camping. You could do a zoo trips. Yeah. And, and like we're going to go, you know, every Monday in the morning, we're going to take the kids to the zoo and uh, we got a group pass and it's all good or whatever. Um, you can do serving opportunities together. Yeah. Right? right. My wife used to take our daughters and their friends, their little Girl Scout friends and brownie friends at that age, and they would go in rhythm. They'd go pick up cats yep. at the uh, shelter. I've shared this before. And they would take them over to the old folks' home. Old folks, nothing to do. Now all of a sudden, boom, brownies, cookies, kids, kittens. kittens yeah. Best day of the week for them, right? Yeah. We do it over and over. You start to get to know certain people. Hey, now we invite them. They don't even have a family. We're inviting them to Thanksgiving. Yep. You're building a relationship. You're moving them towards the gospel in action and in deed That's beautiful. and in word. There's so many of these things. And here's the magic of it. When you pick the thing, yep. pick something you like. Yeah. When you pick the time, pick a time that works for you. Yep. And then just start doing it in rhythm predictably, right? Welcome to the Everyday Disciple Podcast, where you'll learn how to live with greater intentionality and an integrated faith that naturally fits into every area of life. In other words, discipleship as a lifestyle. This is the stuff your parents, pastors, and seminary professors probably forgot to tell you. And now, here's your host, Caesar Kalinowski. Yes, and summer is here. It is here, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the things we say a lot about the Northwest is this is... For people that live up here, summer is the time to... That's when you start remembering what your neighbor's face looks like. And All that. Everyone's yeah, inside. Not, it doesn't rain as much as everybody wants to think. And yeah. the TV makes it out. Like, it's the cliche. Like, yeah, oh, it rains a lot little... there, huh? I'm like, yeah, you meet somebody on a plane. Then in the Seattle area, like, oh, it rains a lot, I guess, huh? <laughs> uh, not so much. But but it's true, though, that uh, summer is the time when everybody's just out and about a whole yeah. lot more. I mean, like, a lot more out and about. Yeah. It's right? a great time to establish, like, <laughs> yeah. rhythms. Yeah. And I know some places it's so hot that it's the opposite. In the summer, everybody just hides in the air con. Yeah. So it, it's all about intentionality. If you're going to meet people, live a life on mission, it's all about intentionality. But for sure, here, yep. the rhythm of the, the seasons, I feel like summer is just low-hanging fruit. That Totally. Yeah. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to mean people, kind of like neighbors and all. So today, that's what I want to talk about this like a, a, the level of intentionality that we get to live with during the summer months as we kind of breathe out yeah. beyond our own family and closer circle of friends so we can build deeper relationship with newer friends and our people of peace so as to sort of queue up things, you know, this autumn or in the yeah. fall for discipleship with these new friends. So I'm going to give everybody a ton of ideas on how to do this and have a bunch of fun and make it fit into their schedule and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah. I don't know what summers in Vienna, Austria are like, but uh, the guy who left the review this week does, Nate BR. He says, hey guys, just wanted to encourage you that this podcast really spoke to me with my current situation, planning a church in Vienna, Austria. Here things seem to be really small and really slow, uh, but I'm taking Jesus at his word and trusting him for that health and growth of the kingdom and the multiplication and expansion. Yeah, man. Follow the spirit. It'll happen. I'm glad that it encouraged him. And we talk about that a lot. Small is big, slow is fast. And he's experiencing that, but it's real. It's yeah. not just cheeky book yep. title. It's the truth. And it's all throughout the, you know, parables. And that's, yeah. All right, man. Summertime. We just talked about it. It's the time of year, at least You're here in the Northwest. You're little summer. <laughs> we all come out of our houses. We spend time in the fresh air. We get in the water. It's my personal favorite time of year. And like you said, it's easily... Uh, I would say the best way to engage neighbors and friends setting up time into the fall. Would you and agree with like, that? Yeah, we get the most light. Yeah, it's like we get these long days. Yeah, it's mind blowing. Kids don't want to sleep because it's, it's light till like midnight. <laughs> yeah, it's like ten thirty at night. I was sitting outside the other night, and it's ten thirty at night, and it's still dusk. It's weird. Yeah, I'll never get used right. to it. So yeah, no, I do agree. I think uh, uh, I think that, that for many parts of the world. Summer, and I know there's parts of the planet that, that flips, so just flip it to your, you know, whatever yeah. season works for you. But for us here in, in the States, we're coming into the summer months. Sure. And, and parts of it are longer than others, but it is, yeah, man, everybody is out and about. And there's a mood change, too. Like, I've noticed that when it's sunny out, yep. and you're out, like, at a parade or a picnic or just in a downtown area or whatever, and it's nice out, everybody's, like, in the best mood. Yeah, so happy. Everybody will share their chips with you, buy you around, like, <laughs> yeah. woo, you know, compared to, like, when it's nasty out, right? And yeah. people are just, like, about their business and in and out, let me get back home, let me get into my cave. So yeah. I, I think... I think summer is this queued up, you know, ball yeah. on a tee for building relationships, uh, new friendships, deepening friendships in a very like, like loose and easy way. Not yeah. to try to close the deal with anybody, but just to get to know people, yep. right? Like high, we call it high invitation, but yep. low challenge. 
right? Absolutely. Boom, right? And you know, what breaks my heart is, and I know a lot of our listeners are going, yeah, that's us, you know, or that's yeah. my church. So many, and this kills me, so many churches say, yeah, our, our small groups, we take off for the summer. Yep. We take them off. Or our missional community, we don't do it in the summer. I'm like, wait a minute. A missional community is a family living on mission. Yeah. So you take your family off for the summer? Yeah, it's so weird. Keith and Kathleen told the kids the other day, kids, it's, it's summer. Gone. We'll see you in the fall. Yeah. Here's, here's a cash card for some food. Don't kill your sister. You know? Yeah, it just doesn't work. It, it, when well, you take it betrays, those it betrays who and what we think the church is and who we are in Christ when we say, we're taking the summer off as the church. What do yeah. you mean? You're just you like if you are the church, if you are a missionary, if you are a servant, yep. you know, if you are a disciple who makes disciples, then there's never taking off. Sure. In fact, I say it's the opposite. I think in the summer is when you hammer the pedal. Now, yeah. in the rhythms you're already going to be living. Sure. It's not trying to create a lot of activity or extra work. It's like, hey, everybody you know is out having a blast. Yep. Figure out some stuff to do together, and we'll talk about what and how and you know to make right. all that work. And oh my gosh, man, it's just, yeah. it's low hanging fruit. You know, another aspect of the low hanging fruit that we've found in our life, just because, you know, we, you have some kids that are, you know, what, what do you say sometimes you're the old horse, the old buck? That's what I'm you I'm the say. old buck. Yeah, my kids are gone. Your kids are gone. We've got four in the house. And, and one of the, the most amazing things as far as missions concerned is how kids are such an amazing opportunity at building relationships. They're friendly. They talk to everybody. Yep. We've actually had many people of peace in our lives based off our kids connecting. We're at the and, pool. Yeah, and even more so in the summer, right? Yeah. Because you're out doing stuff. Yeah. But London comes on, our oldest comes home once a week with some kid that he met playing soccer. He's like, yeah, I got his, mo his mom gave me his phone number, so I want to hang out with them. And the next thing you know, we have them over for dinner. So, uh, Yeah, when well, we were recording think, this this week, yeah. when school just let out, it was like a switch. Yeah. My yard... Full of kids, not mine, but <laughs> yeah, you know, they, just random kids because they all know like it's cool. Mr. C, you can go in his yard, you don't care, you know. Yeah, and we just got a whole new batch of otter pops, you know, like Mr. Freeze oh, yeah. pops because keep those on hand because yep. then you're everybody's best friend. Like, hey, what are you guys doing? You look kind of sweaty playing ball. Hey, good hit, you know, want an otter yeah. pop? Heck yeah, they do, of course. And so it was like a light switch. So mm -hmm. I agree though, even still. So I don't want people to hear like, well, my kids are gone, yeah. or I don't have kids yet. Like, if you're listening, single, you know what. I've done it for years. I'm yeah. the guy with the fr the freeze pops yeah. in the neighborhood, and the kids know, and they love me even more for it. And it's just dialogue, and it's just a way to be nice and build yeah, friendships. Yeah, and we say, you know, we say a lot that that living on mission requires so much intentionality. Like it's thinking about those situations, going, okay, bunch of kids. I've got kids out of the house. How can I still live into the rhythm that's happening in my neighborhood? It does freak their parents pops. out because I reuse the plastics. Like when the kids are done with them, <laughs> I leave them around the yard. I fill them up with Kool-Aid. I put oh, a clothespin awesome. pin on them like when we were kids. <laughs> they're like, did, did this come open or close? And it's like, well, Mr. Yeah, there's no, still I'm some, no, there's still some blue pops that go left. <laughs> um, so we wanted this episode to be really practical because yeah. a lot, we'll take theology quite a bit, but this one is like, let's just give some ideas. Super practical. Yeah. Um, so maybe we jump into some of these practical suggestions that you might give for people who are feeling, maybe they've listened to this podcast the last month or the last year, maybe they've been reading some stuff and they're like, this is the, this is the year that we really want to engage yeah. on mission. Let's give some suggestions for how we could do that. Great. L let me, let me put an umbrella over the whole thing because everything I'm going to share Yep. I, I'm not sharing as like one-offs. Hey, this summer, do this once. Sure. I want to put this umbrella over everything. Think predictable patterns, hmm. things that you're doing in rhythm. Yeah. You know, the, like a baseball season, it's not one game. Yeah. You get season tickets, you go to a lot of games, sure. right? Football, soccer, all that, right? Rugby, yeah, go see bulls. <laughs> um, so I want people to think rhythm, think predictable patterns. And, yeah. and the reason being is when you do things in rhythm, people come to know and expect them. Sure. And so they can't make it this time. That's okay, I'll make it next week, right? Yeah. And you get to also, it's so much easier to plan when you go like, no, you know, like we play cards on Friday night or, you know, we do a barbecue every weekend. Yeah. Or we do, you know, I'm going to give a million ideas, right? So I want everybody to hear that all of these ideas are not in light of one-offs. Like, hey, remember the time when we yeah. had that Christmas party? Like everybody came Oh, it was so said, amazing. We never did it again. All my neighbors are like, I don't know. I, I wish I knew my neighbors better. And we never did it again. Wow. Yeah. So some are a perfect opportunity to create some new predictable patterns that, will lead into all kinds of stuff come fall and beyond, right? So, yeah. so like, um, when we first moved out to the Pacific Northwest, we saw, like, whoa, weather opportunity, and we started doing um, a barbecue every Friday night, Okay, you know? Now, I know my Southern friends, they don't call it barbecue. They say, no, you grill out. You yeah. grill a barbecue. It, it requires require smoke and things yeah, turning. And I don't have any of that. No, I don't have that. So we call it a barbecue, so get over it, Southern <laughs> friends. Um, so, but we do it every week, and it was real simple. Yeah. 
We did flyers though. Okay, this is key. Yeah. We went around the neighborhood with some very ho- homegrown, cheesy flyers that just said, you know, neighborhood barbecue, just getting to know the neighbors. Sure. Bring, bring a meat to grill or whatever you want to, bring whatever you want to grill because some people are vegetarians or whatever yeah. and they grill like giant mushroom caps where we're doing meat um, and um, and a beverage of choice. We'll have all the sides. Hmm. And so that Tina and I and then a handful of the Michelin community would just make up giant things of potato salad or noodle salad or salad or what, you know, just whatever. Yeah. So it wasn't expensive. Then people brought what they wanted to grill and they, so even if they, this idea of handing out the flyer, A, they need to know about it. Sure. But even if they couldn't make it, here we are. Hey, how's it going? We're nice. We're huh. seeing them. Hey, uh, we're going to be gone this weekend, but thanks for the invite. Maybe next time. Great. We're doing it every week. Now you see the difference from yeah. like, oh, I missed it this year. Yep. So <laughs> you like, know, no, it's just around like the, the neighborhood again. block party that the city tells you to put on. Like if you don't make it, like yeah. I guess I won't see the neighbors this year. It's like <laughs> so, sad. so so predictable patterns. So we do it every week. And and the other Love thing that. is we we start putting out a little like I don't know we made it out of plywood or something a little A frame you know like a little easily thing that would sit out in front of the house. Okay. And one of the gals in the community painted it up like barbecue tonight. Huh. And that way. As people are driving around the neighborhood, they're going, oh, that's right. That's yeah. tonight. See, couple that with seeing us and us walking around the neighborhood, you know, sure. for our evening or morning walks and the invites going out week after week. Yep. It grew from a handful of people to a handful more to like 40, 50 people. It started being wow. regularly. Then people were like, you shouldn't have to be the only ones having it. We'll we're going to have it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. We'll host it over here. So that's cool. predictable pattern was key. I had people say like, well, we threw something and like only three or four couples came. Only? How many yeah. people can you talk to at once? Like, so yeah. don't get hung up on big numbers. You say, well, I don't know, man, like 40 or 50. I, that was awesome. Yeah. That took, that took summer's worth. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, to get people to that level of trust and fun and bringing their friends and promoting the heck that's out of it. That's cool, man. Um, so that's one kind of a thing. Um, you can do like drive-by drinks or like we have, uh, we have driveway happy hour in our I neighborhood. That, yeah. And all you have to do is put up like one of those little pop-up white tents. You don't have to have the tent thing, but you do. We go on the Facebook group that's for our neighborhood, and you just go like, f- f- you know, Wednesday, thir- Friday night, you know, whatever, driveway happy hour. Boom. People see you out there, they'll come. I'm not yeah, kidding you, you know? Cool. <laughs> yeah. and, and so, but to do it once is cool. But if you go like, you know what, this summer, come when you want, but we're going to do it every Wednesday, like hump yeah, day. from five right? to we're seven. We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. That's cool. Another thing that was, was and is still like the biggest hit, we call it breakfast club. Hmm. Like, um... You invite people to like on a Saturday or Sunday morning. Okay. That's when people are off. Yep. So I know like, well, wait, wait, I can't do it on Sunday. I got to go to church. Be the church. Try yeah. it out once in a while. Get in a rhythm, maybe once a month. Yeah. God will forgive you <laughs> yeah. if you're not sitting in the seat talking about how to love people. Just yeah. go actually talking, love them. Just listening to how yeah, yeah, right. being told. Don't do it. Just talk about it. Um, no. So breakfast club is like this. Um, we invite people to like an open house breakfasty thing. So okay. we always do super mounds of cheap food, like, you know, big thing of pancake batter. Sure bake up some bacon by the way that's the best way to make bacon don't fry it it's don't a mess it. it curls up it's weird it's half cooked bake it on a sheet golden okay mm. um usually mimosas in our case people yeah. love the mimosas and here's the magic of it people love breakfast as you know we yeah. we owned a breakfast restaurant for eight years people are nuts for breakfast because no one takes the time for breakfast anymore sure no one wants to you know but when you offer breakfast and then here's the other magic thing when you offer it as like it's an open house thing, like, yeah, we'll be doing it from like 9.30-ish to like, I don't know, 10.30, 11.30, whenever. I don't in. know. Just swing in as long as you can. Pop in, pop out, whatever. What do, what do I, what can I bring? Don't say nothing. We have it all, even if you do, because people feel better and feel more like family. Sure. So, so well, I'll bring some fruit salad or bring a bottle of champagne. We'll be doing mimosas, right? Yeah. Or bring, you know, and if they, well, they brought fruit. I have so much fruit. Freeze it. Yeah. Right? Use it next use week. It, right? yeah. Make a salad with it next week, whatever. So- let people, people are so much more interested when they think they can pop in and pop out so they don't feel stuck. Hmm. Way less of a challenge to people who they're not sure about you to come to a formal meal. Like, I met these neighbors walking the other day, never met them before. You guys want to come over for dinner? What? Yeah. But we're doing a neighborhood thing in rhythm. Yep. Like, we'll be doing it every other Saturday or every other Sunday all summer. Yeah. Come get to know each other, yeah. I'll tell you what, man, Breakfast Club, it's the most popular thing we ever did. Huh. <laughs> there was there was a friend of ours several years ago that started doing it. He was an engineer for he is an engineer for a living. Okay, he built his breakfast club cart like out of like steel and wheels and all, and it held all his chairs he needed, the grill, a cooler was in it. How and cool! He, had, is he this? had it down to the penny of how many people he could feed for like a buck twelve each and all this. because wow. I mean, he was an engineer. And then the, the neighbors flipped on it. They loved oh, it. Sure. And so then the neighbors started borrowing the breakfast club cart. 
huh. so they could host their own like breakfast brunchy things. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, we already talked about happy hour, easy ones, yeah. short. It's just drinks and snacks, right? Yeah. Make sure you have non-alcoholic beverages. Some people don't want them. They just want to hang. It's, yeah. not, it's not about boozing, but some people appreciate a beer or a glass of wine, okay? Well, and we, and we shouldn't have to say this, but I think just kind of, like you said with the umbrella, the other thing is like, don't feel like you have to seal the deal of of, of leading them to Jesus that you know that happy hour. In fact, please don't. Yeah, like, like don't even go there just unless that. it comes up. You yeah, know what I'm saying like that's not the goal of this. Just like when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," he didn't say, "But first, yeah, sit down. Let me explain a bunch of stuff. Say this, you know, prayer, you know, after me." It's like he said, "Come and follow me. Like see the life, taste the life, see that you know, see what generosity feels like. See, yeah, I had a friend see what the other ease day. and freedom looks and tastes like. Yeah, yeah I was having a, fr- a conversation the other day. He's like, "Well, there's no point in doing that sort of stuff if you're not leading them to the gospel." And you're like. No, your life is leading into like. No, just, I'm gonna get there. Yeah. I want to get there, but leading into not the gospel tonight. in every area of life, not just in a say your prayer, wait for heaven sort of way. Yeah, exactly. Right? So if the first thing that they move from unbelief to belief in, when we talked about that's what discipleship is, is unbelief to belief is God's kids aren't weird and they can throw a good party, yeah. or they're fun to hang with. That's game big. on. Yeah, <laughs> game on. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's another idea. Uh, predictable pattern again. Do this. Don't do it once. Say, hey, we're hosting like. A Friday movie night at our house hmm. or, you know, borrow that spare projector from the church or your buddy who's a salesman or yeah. they're, they're out there and throw it up on the side of the wall or I like, I can't wait to get dark. It's too late. Then open your garage. It's darker in there and sure. shoot it in the garage. Let the kids put the blankets all and leave the door up. It'll be dark an hour earlier that way. You know what yeah. I mean? Or something, right? Work it out or do movie night in the house. Who, if it's really hot where you live in, in the air conditioning and just pop up tons of popcorn, have sodas, and yeah. have some adult beverages for the adults if you so care to. I, I would suggest it. and But do it in rhythm. Yeah. And what will usually happen with those, because we've done them, the kids are all like on the blankets, loving it, making a mess with the popcorn. You'll vacuum it up sure. later. And the parents all retreat and talk and hang out. And uh. you get to know them. And you got like a two-hour window. Yeah. And they're grateful for it, because the kids loved it and you loved it. And I'm telling you, you do it in rhythm, and yeah. it's like, well, I can't make it this week, but... Oh, Incredibals too. Our kids are like, they're nuts for that, you know? Yeah. So it's coming out when as soon as the DVD, we're going to have it, you know? And it's like all that stuff, so. Yeah, you know, it reminds me um, back on episode 160, we talked about how to celebrate according to the gospel. So if you haven't, this ties in well because we say in that episode, why do Christians typically suck at partying? Like how do we throw <laughs> better parties? You know, so if there's popcorn all over, don't be the hovering helicopter that has to scold all the kids. Like this is a time of celebration. Up. That's yeah. okay. Deal, deal with It'll it later. Right. If so you have 160... a dog, it's already covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you can do camping. You could do a zoo trips. Yeah. And, and like we're going to go, you know, every Monday we're gonna, morning, we're going to take the kids to the zoo and uh, we got a group pass and it's all good or whatever. Um, you can do serving opportunities together. Really, yeah. Right. My wife used to take our daughters and their friends, their little Girl Scout friends and Brownie friends at that age. And they would go in rhythm. They'd go pick up cats Yep. at the uh, shelter. I've shared this before. And they would take them over to the old folks' home. Old folks, nothing to do. Now all of a sudden, boom, brownies, cookies, kids, kittens. kittens yeah. Best day of the week for them, right? Yeah. We do it over and over. You start to get to know certain people. Hey, now we invite them. They don't even have a family. We invite them to Thanksgiving. Yep. You're building a relationship. You're moving them towards the gospel in action and in deed That's beautiful. and in word. There's so many of these things. And here's the magic of it. When you pick the thing, yep. pick something you like. Yeah. When you pick the time, pick a time that works for you. Yep. And then just start doing it in rhythm predictably, right? It's, we're not, you know, people say like, well, I, we're so busy. I'm like, wait a minute. Do you eat every night? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's going to do yeah, that. Yeah, you're going to. So, so plan it out. And there's a bunch of tips how to do it. Plan it out in a way that's easy. Now, I will, word of caution. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing this as a missional community, bonus. Yeah. But be careful that you don't have like 20, 30 of your Christian friends and three, you're not yet believing neighbors, and they feel all weirded out and overwhelmed. Yeah, We would do these things, and I would have certain key people that are just like everybody's friend immediately. Sure. Right? And I'd have them there. You know, just They would get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I've had people that I had to uninvite. Like, they came, they were newer to the community, and they just started, like, you know, washed in the blood language all over people and, you know, <laughs> born again and everybody. Time. And you're like, it ain't the time for that. We're watching movie night here. It's good. You know, or we're having a mimosa with some bacon and eggs. You know, yeah. so, And they didn't get it because they're, again, they were there thinking the goal is to get everybody saved and in and, you know, and getting to go on to church. It's like, no, the goal is to make disciples yeah. who make disciples. And that's a process because that's all of life. And I want them to know Christ and I want them to be set free from their sin and, and have all of life salvation. And we're going to start here. And so that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's not even on us. It's not anyway. our job. So, so be careful that you don't accidentally live on mission to the point with so many people 
Yeah. Especially if they're not hip to the language and being generous and like living out the gospel through celebration. Yeah. Just be careful who, you know, sometimes you want certain mature, good party and hanging Christians to do this kind of stuff with you. And yeah. I would suggest do it with some friends, you know? Yeah. Because then multiple people are kind of working in the room and getting to know people and you're cross pollinating relationships and you're not going to hit it off with everybody. You know, no. we talk about your per- people of peace. It's like, man, Heath, that guy loved you, bro. <laughs> like, that's yeah. your buddy. Like, I don't know. We just hit it off, man. We have the same guitars and, yeah. like, you know, we're talking about all that. And so we're going to get together and share some stuff. And uh, we're going to do a little recording. Like, dude, that's, that's, yeah, Tina's, there's these little micro communities yeah, forming. Yeah, Tina's not going to pull that one off, yeah. you know? But, like, just like, I'm not going to pull off the thing, like, hey, we're getting together to to learn all these new desserts for you know summer fun like yeah I, i'm not i'm not leading that you know yeah exactly <laughs> i'm not building a relationship there but maybe talking harleys with a guy i will or like rugby or you know or whatever yeah. so yeah yes we need each other get in rhythm pick something you love and, and a time that fits your schedule and get after it man you know one of the things uh one of the things we did as a family and it was just an idea that i had that i thought would be really fun and we tried it and it worked really well we did a night where we had we invited the neighborhood over, there was about 15, 20 people that showed up and they had to bring a dish that came from their country of origin. So we have a Moroccan neighbor and he brought a Moroccan dish and that just opened up. They felt valued. They shared about their dish. I love that. There's some cool culture Tina does stuff that so happening. well. Like, what oh, should I bring? Amazing. Bring whatever's like part of your tradition. Yeah, tell us about it. Like, what's your like, favorite summer you. thing or what's your favorite Christmas thing or whatever? Yeah. And then we did a YouTube viewing party. So everyone would submit their five favorite funny youtube clips oh that's brilliant and so then you had i mean it was just a night we were laughing our butts off man because some videos we've never seen they're short clips they're three minutes long beep, beep. It, no. yeah yeah <laughs> but it was just amazing you get to see people's sense of humor it, it was really fun that's so, awesome so we uh we we did set this up at the beginning that summer is the best time to start setting some rhythms that could keep relationships i think you going. can do this all year but sure. I, I just that like i said earlier that that we take the summer off thing or or I've planned out my whole summer around me and my family vacations, and we go here with this, and we do that. Like, like notice, I said, like, I'm going to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, last week, I talked about I'm going to be gone up until the 3rd, but yeah. I'm in my neighborhood on the 4th. Yeah. Very Back intentional. Very yeah. intentional, right? Yeah. Because one year I wasn't, and I felt like, gosh, I miss so much fun in the neighborhood. So if you say, well, we already planned out the whole summer. Like, well, like, what, like 90 days of it? There's yeah. got to be a predictable pattern you can find in there. Bring a new level of intentionality. I think you can do it all year, but I think you're absolutely right. He summer is just it's it's easy. It's just easier. Yeah. And what do you say on the practical side as we're moving towards looking at even the fall, inviting people into more discipleship opportunities? How can we intentionally move? Do you think that comes just from that that rhythm, or is that there? You go exactly it. You're doing these things, but for the purpose of building relationships. So you're looking for who are your people of peace, meaning those people that are kind of, they like you, they're leaning into yeah. relationship. They know you and your family are Christians and have faith. It doesn't weird them out because you don't weird them out. Yeah. And so you're looking for opportunities. You know, I've got neighbors here that I've like, hey, let's go do this together. Like I got an extra ticket for that. Or they're like, I'm down. Yeah. Well, how, but how did I get to know them through these other things? Yep. And then that thing bridged another thing. And now we're walking together and hanging out. And, yeah. you know, in our mornings, getting some exercise. And next thing you know, our families are pals. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so don't do not do the event check the box because you heard it on the podcast and, you know, Caesar and Heath told you to. You're looking to build relationships of trust. We've said it before, but the kingdom expands. It, it moves along the lines in the, in the tracks of relationship. Yeah. And then the gospel moves along the lines of trust. And, and sometimes you're going to build relationship in these summer predictable patterns, but you're going to build trust through the offline things that you begin to do as well. Yeah. Now I'm always looking to the fall and going like, okay, can we build out enough relationships and can we build out enough trust and rhythms and yep. predictable patterns that when we pray, what's next Lord? And we start to invite people into the story and God yep. prepares their hearts. People are like, yeah, I'll do the story guy yeah. with you. Now we may not stay I not call it that way, but you're like, we explain what we're doing and yeah, why exactly. this is important to us. And they're like, that sounds so different than the way I was raised, you know, under the Bible's a story, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, <laughs> know it that way. And yeah. so I'm always thinking that way. I'm moving relationally towards that, both with believers in the community yeah. and unbelievers. Cause like no one knows the story hardly. Sure. You know? <laughs> it's a beautiful story, man. Okay. So we gave a lot of practical, but there's still a big three we can mine out of this, I think. And you can get the big three, which is the, what, like we say, when we distill the show down, three takeaways we want you to walk away with. If nothing else. Yeah. You get these three. Yeah. yeah. And you get it for free by going to everydaydisciple.com forward slash big three. These are, what are the big three for this week? All right. First one, your neighbors, friends, and your people of peace, those people that are just kind of leaning into relationship, they're all out looking for fun and relationships this summer. Yeah. 
So don't believe the lie that everyone's too busy or they prefer to keep to themselves, okay? We usually tend to live with a sense of self-fulfilling prophecy in connection to that. Like, mm. no one wants to do this. Did you ever try? No, but no, really, you don't want to. Yeah. So, you, so reach out, have fun, Press let God do the work and work it out for who accepts your invitations and who leans back you know, into relationship with you, yeah. right? But I'm just trust me, I'm going to loan you some faith on this as the, what you call me, old buck, <laughs> older <laughs> brother. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, uh, the, who does this a lot. People are, they're, they're looking for fun, man. They are. They're, they're always looking for a good time. All right. Mm. So secondly, um, God's given you this summer for your pleasure Yep. and his glory. Mm. So have a blast this summer. Have fun. This isn't like, oh, yeah, I got to kill sure my Sabbath. No, yeah. have a blast. Sabbath, have fun. But it's all, he's giving it to you for your pleasure and his glory. So with a little pre-planned intentionality, you can pick fun things to do that fit your schedule and serve to include others in. Mm. You know, ways to invite your friends and neighbors to sort of a place at dad's table, if you were. Yeah. So it won't happen accidentally. Um, and and I just, I just want to tell you, you know, don't let fear of man or self-love rob you of some awesome opportunities this summer oh, that's good dude okay yeah, third funny. pick one thing and we just gave you about six or eight ideas make up your own whatever pick one thing and start this week you know mm. i was talking to some people we're coaching the other day and they're like hey we got to start doing the friday night barbecue thing this was on a monday i'm like great you have five days four days you know yeah. like it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't like you're gonna eat like just invite okay, people yeah, that's yeah. all see what happens right so Pick one thing, start this week, and plan on predictable patterns. Hmm. So whether it's a you know weekly barbecue, breakfast club, happy hour, some service projects, trip to a park or the zoo, whatever, getting into a rhythm that fits your schedule and others, you know, so they can be certain that you're doing it. You know, yeah. with or without them, they know that's key. That's key to building trust and building relationships. That that sort of predictable pattern. So these new repeated rhythms of life together. You trust me, they'll grow and they'll extend into greater opportunities in your relationships hmm. and for discipleship and community life as things progress. So have fun with this. Yeah. But get started. Yeah. You that, get to. That's so fun, man. And we'd love to invite you to join our Facebook group if you haven't yet. You get there by going to Facebook, up in the search bar, typing in an Everyday Disciple Podcast. And that's another place to share ideas. We give you six or eight, like Caesar just said, but there you can go and say, hey, we tried this. It worked. We tried this. We learned from this. The best stuff coming did th from others. On yeah, yeah. We did this last year. It didn't work because of this. So we tweaked it this year. To, to, I mean, just super yep. helpful for one yep. another. It's a good way to serve one another by joining that group. Next week, we're going to talk about idolatry. How can you determine idols that are in your life and how to actively destroy them when they appear? Ooh, destroy them. When I was coming up with some topics, I was like, that's, so that's why you have all these totem poles and statues. Uh, We're going to destroy those. Shrine, yeah. We're, We're going to destroy those. No, I just, I could not get away from that. This, I felt like the spirit just kept saying like idolatry, idolatry, as I was working out what we're going to talk about. Dude, I keep telling you, you're a big old sinner. I am. I, my heart is an idol factory, as John idol. Calvin would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. For more information on this show and to get loads of free discipleship resources, visit everydaydisciple.com. And remember, you really can live with the spiritual freedom and relational peace that Jesus promised every day.